بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بإذن الله Today we will be speaking about a very interesting surah, a chapter of the Qur'an, wherein Allah Jalla wa'ala mentions many different topics. He speaks about those who measure and weigh and how they should be weighing. He also mentions a punishment for those who shortchange or cheat. After that, he speaks a little bit about the heart. What affects the heart? What causes the heart to become closed and sealed so to say. He then mentions the greatest bounty in Jannah. What is the greatest bounty in Jannah? After that, he mentions the believers and the disbelievers and some of the things that will occur on the day of Qiyamah and later on when the believers enter Jannah, what they will see. In Surah Al-Mutaffifin, Allah Jalla wa'ala begins by saying, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Destruction. Destruction to those who short change. When they measure, when they weigh something for other people, they shortchange them. It is mentioned that one of the reasons for this surah being revealed was when Rasulullah ﷺ went to Medina, he found that the people there, those who were buying and selling, those who were weighing and measuring for others, they would shortchange. So it is then mentioned Allah Jalla wa'ala revealed this verse. Hence, a lot of the scholars mention that this surah, this chapter, is a Madani chapter. It was one that was revealed after Hijrah. As for the previous chapters we've been through, most of the scholars said those were Makki and revealed before Hijrah. Getting back to the surah, Allah Jalla wa'ala begins by saying, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Destruction. Wail, according to some tafasir, could also mean a valley in Jahannam, in the fire. Destruction to those who shortchange. When they want to weigh, when they want to measure for others, they shortchange them. <inaudible> These very people, when it's time for them to get something from somebody. So let's say a person is buying some grain or a person is buying something that is measured or weighed, then they want to take it in full. In fact, not only in full, at times they want more. So look at the double standards. When they need something, when they are buying something, when they are on the receiving end, they want it in full. And they want to have even more than their fair share. As for when they have to give others, when they are selling to others, they short change them. They give them less. The scholars mention that mutaffifin in these verses, yes, it is referring mainly to those who measure and weigh. But we can also derive from these ayat that the one who is unjust, the one who has double standards, when it comes to anything in life, when it comes to his own rights, he wants to take it in full. And when it comes to others, he wants to give them less. So, for example, they mention when it comes to salah, you find a person when it comes to himself, he wants to have the best of everything, the best of this dunya. He asks Allah to give him as much as possible. But when it comes to fulfilling the rights of Allah Jalla wa'ala, he doesn't perform his salah correctly. He doesn't make his wudu correctly. He short changes or we could say that he is negligent. He doesn't fulfill these rights in full. At the same time, when it comes to dealing with people in other matters besides weighing and measurement, when it comes to greeting, for example, when it comes to speaking, he wants everybody to greet him in the best of manner. He wants everybody to speak to him in the best of manner. But when he has to greet others, he does not greet them in the best of manner. When he has to speak to them, he doesn't speak well of them. So Allah Jalla wa'ala is basically warning this type or this group of people of a punishment. Do they not realize? Do they not understand that they will come a day most definitely when they will be resurrected. So all this short changing, you won't get away with it. There will come a day where you will pay for your actions. Allah Jalla wa'ala then describes this day. لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is a great day. On that day, everybody will be standing for Allah Jalla wa'ala. They'll be waiting. It's mentioned in some of the ahadith 
that on that day when the people are resurrected, they will stand for years and years. Some of the scholars mention that there will be no movement. People will just be staring, waiting. On that day, the sun will be so close. People will be drowning in their own sweat. As for a believer, in some of the hadith it is mentioned that for him, this period of time will be very short. And it will be like the time he used to spend when performing the obligatory prayer. So two different types of people, those who disbelieved, those who sinned, for them it will be a very difficult day. As for a believer, Allah Jalla wa ala will make this day easy for him. He then says, Kalla, nay, it's not like how they imagined, it's not like how they believed where there will be no resurrection. Kalla, inna kitab al fujari la fi sijjin. Those who did bad, those who did evil, those who transgressed, their records will be in the lowest of low. The scholars mention a lot of detail when it comes to as sijjin We could say that it would be the lowest of low. Another opinion is they would feel that they did some good deeds. However, those were not actually good deeds and they were not accepted by Allah Jalla wa ala. He then says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سِجِّين Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what makes you know what is as sijjin Whenever Allah Jalla wa ala repeats a verse or repeats a question like a rhetorical question it's to show its magnitude it's to show that it's something major this is a book that has been written and recorded there will be no increase in whatever was written there will be no decrease exactly as it is wail and destruction for those who rejected those who disbelieved, they disbelieved in the signs, they disbelieved in the hour, they disbelieved in the fact that they would be resurrected one day. They rejected the day of Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. The ones who rejected it are those who transgressed the limits, those who disobeyed Allah. Those who felt that they would never be brought to task. When a person has that fear that whatever he does, there will be consequences to his actions, whether in this world or the next, it helps him to stay away from evil. As for these people, they thought that there would be no consequences to their actions. When the verses of Allah came to them, they said, these are fairy tales. These are stories that came long ago. There is no reality and no truth to them. Allah Jalla wa ala then mentions one of the reasons for them saying this. He says, Kalla, nay, bal rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. The reason for this, the reason for them rejecting is because there is ran. There is a covering which has covered and encapsulated their hearts. As mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when a person commits a sin or does something bad, there is a black dot put on his heart. If he has to make istighfar and rectify it, then it is rubbed out. If he carries on committing sin, the heart gets to a stage where it's engulfed and overtaken by darkness and blackness. And this in turn causes the heart to lose its ability to differentiate between right and wrong. Remember, Iman, your belief, your faith, it increases and decreases. When a person does good, his iman increases. When a person does bad, his iman decreases. And this also shows when it comes to the heart. If you do a good deed, then your heart remains clean. If you do a bad deed, then your heart starts becoming black. So make a lot of istighfar, especially after you've committed a sin, especially after you've done something bad. We should be worried and we should be scared for our hearts to be overtaken by this darkness and this blackness. Allah Jalla wa ala then says, Kalla, innahum rabbihim yawma lamahjubun. In this world, their hearts became black. They were blinded. And on the day of Qiyamah, they will be prevented from seeing Allah Jalla wa ala. There will be a cover, literally a hijab, a whole covering. They will be blocked off from seeing Allah Jalla wa ala. And from this verse, we derive that as for those who believe, they will see Allah Jalla wa ala. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in a hadith, when the people of Jannah enter Jannah and Allah jalla wa ala has given them so many bounties, he will then call out to them and tell them, did I not favor you? Did I not give you this? Did I not give you that? And they would say yes. After that, he would ask, so is there anything else I should give you more? And they wouldn't know what to do. They would say, no, we've got everything. And Allah jalla wa ala, at that point, the veil or the covering will be removed and they will see the Creator, the Almighty Himself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says, that gift or that bounty, that reward of seeing Allah jalla wa ala will be the greatest gift they've ever been given in Jannah, in Paradise. We ask Allah jalla wa ala to make us from those who see Him in Jannah. Amin. As for those who rejected and those who disbelieved, they will not have the pleasure of seeing Allah jalla wa ala. Allah then says, ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ These people will be thrown into the burning fire. ثُمَّ يُقَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ Then it will be said to them, this fire, this hour, this punishment, this is what you were rejecting. Kalla, nay, inna kitab al-abrari lafi illiyin. As for those who believed, their books or their records will be in the highest of high. Some of the scholars mention that illiyin is Jannah. Another way of interpreting it is that their books are in the highest of high, the best of the best. Allah Jalla wa Ala then says, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا إِلِّيُّونَ What makes you know, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is Al-Illiyun? Kitabun Marqum. He then describes the books. These books are records which are recorded in full. They have been protected. There is no increase. There is no decrease. يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ The Malaika. The angels witness what is recorded in these books. يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Allah Jalla wa Ala then speaks about the believers. Indeed, those who are pious, those who obeyed Allah Jalla wa Ala will be in bliss, eternal bliss, happiness and enjoyment. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ They will be on beautified bedding or couches where they will be looking. Looking at what? Looking at their different bounties. Allah Jalla wa Ala would have given them so many different things and they will be there relaxing and looking at all these things. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَظْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ You would see from their faces, if you had to look at them, you would see it becomes apparent that they are in a state of enjoyment, relaxation. There is no worry and no problems. Everything is as they wish. تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَظْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مَخْتُومٍ خِتَامُهُ مسك. From the beverages they will be given is wine which is pure and clear, clean, the best of wine. خِتَامُهُ مسك. There is more than one way of interpreting this verse. Either that this wine will have a scent of musk or this wine will be sealed with musk or its end taste will be that of musk. When somebody drinks from a drink or a cup, you find at the end is usually the part that doesn't really taste nice. People leave it. So this part will be like musk. Whatever it is, Allah Jalla wa Ala knows best. We ask him to grant us this and all the bounties in Jannah. خِتَامُهُ مِسْكْ وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Allah Jalla wa Ala then says after describing Jannah, after describing all the bounties, the beverages, what gifts they will be given, he then says in this is where people should race one another. They should compete with one another. فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ not like those who he mentioned at the beginning of the surah, those who cheated, those who shortchanged. There is no competition in that. The real competition is when it comes to the akhirah. The real competition is when it comes to doing good deeds and preceding others. Also, when it comes to this munafasa, this competition, it is a clean competition. So you are competing with others, not with the intention or not by doing something that harms them. No, everybody is in a competition that is clean. You are all trying to do your best without harming one another. وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْنِيمٍ Allah Jalla wa Ala then mentions the beverage again. This wine that has a taste of musk or it smells of musk, it will be mixed with 
Tasneem. What is Tasneem? Aynan yashrabu biha al-muqarrabun. Tasneem is from a spring which will gush in Jannah. So Allah Jalla wa Ala says that this wine that has properties of musk will also be mixed with Tasneem. وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْنِيمٍ عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ As for Tasneem itself, it is a spring which only the closest of close to Allah Jalla wa Ala would drink from. As we know, the people of Jannah, their rank differs. They are those who are at the highest of ranks. These people, Allah Jalla wa Ala has given them more than he gave the normal people in Jannah. Because in this world, they did more when it came to their good deeds, when it came to being the best in everything, when it came to preceding others and competing with others, they were first. So it's only fair that they are given more. So this spring of At-Tasneem, only those who are close to Allah Jalla wa Ala will be able to drink from it purely 100% as for the others whose wine was described previously the normal people of jannah they will also get this tasneem in their beverage however it will be mixed so look at the difference as for those who are close to allah jalla wa ala for them it is 100% not diluted as for those who are still in jannah and they are still rewarded but they are not from the closest of close they will get to taste the drink but it will be diluted so allah jalla wa ala says wa mizajuhu min tasneem aynan yashrabu biha almuqarrabun inna alladhina ajramu kanu min alladhina amanu yadhakun he then goes to mention a little bit of what occurred in this world those who disbelieved those who rejected they used to laugh at the believers. كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَضْحَكُونَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ Whenever they used to pass by them, they used to make funny gestures, they used to mock them. Again, they used to make fun of them. وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ انْقَلَبُوا فَكِهِينَ After making fun of these people, when they would return home, they would return back proud and haughty. Another meaning is, even though Allah Jalla wa Ala gave them everything, Instead of making shukr, instead of being grateful for what they had, they went out to make fun of others. So when they returned home, everything was there. All the bounties were there. Instead of being grateful for these bounties and using them for good, rather they were distracted and they went to trouble others. وَإِذَا رَأَوْهُمْ When these people who were mocking the believers, whenever they saw them, وَإِذَا رَأَوْهُمْ قَالُوا إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ لَضَالُّونَ These people who are following Muhammad, are most definitely astray. وَمَا أُرْسِلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ حَافِظِينَ Addressing these people, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, you were not sent to keep a record or to judge the followers of Muhammad or anybody else for that matter. For you are your own deeds. It is not up to you who is misguided and who is guided. It was not for you to judge. وَمَا أُرْسِلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ حَافِظِينَ فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ as for today, on the Day of Judgment, after the believers enter Jannah, those same people who are mocking them in this world, the believers will then see them being punished on the Day of Qiyamah. They will laugh at them. فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ They will look at them from where they are, on their sofas, on their beautified beddings. They will be able to see those who are being punished, those who are making fun of them in this world. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ هَلْ ثُوِّبَ الْكُفَّارُ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Allah Jalla wa Ala then asks a rhetorical question. Were those who rejected, those who made fun of others, have they been recompensed in full? In other words, most definitely they would be punished and whatever they did in this world will come back to haunt them on the day of Qiyamah and they will receive what they deserve in full. May Allah Jalla wa Ala protect us. As mentioned before, when we read these verses, understand their meanings, we should ponder over them further. We should take a deeper look into them and try to implement whatever teachings we are able to in our lives. Every day when you read the Quran, you learn something of benefit, something new. Try to implement it, even if it is only one thing. So for example, in today's verses, we learned that when a person commits a sin, then there is a dot that is put on his heart. And if he carries on, this blackness eventually engulfs the heart and he cannot differentiate between right and wrong. So when a person commits a sin, 
you should make istighfar. Not only that, even if a person hasn't committed a sin, make a lot of istighfar. Because sometimes we don't realize that we have committed sins or in our wajib or our fard, those acts of worship which are compulsory, we are actually lacking. And for that, a person makes istighfar. So for example, if a person performs salah, and he hasn't performed it to the best of his ability. Maybe he was distracted. One of the ways in which he can make up for this lack of concentration is by making istighfar, asking Allah Jalla wa ala to forgive his shortcomings. Another verse we touched on was that of doing good deeds and competing with one another to carry out good deeds. Yet a third verse we touched on was the greatest bounty, the greatest gift and reward for the people of Jannah, and that will be seeing their Creator, seeing Allah Jalla wa ala. So one should make dua and ask Allah Jalla wa ala to make him from those who see him in Jannah. We ask Allah Jalla wa ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and make us from those who recite the Quran, understand it, and practice upon it. Amin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين